how am I embodying peace in this moment? The third one is love. And for me, that is all about sharing the love. How am I exuding that? How am I really allowing that love to be felt through me and through my expressions in life? And then the fourth ingredient is... This Christmas season for me is, yes, about loving like God loves, but it's also about really just knowing for myself that it is up to me to now embody God's love. Not only mimic it, but truly embody it. To be able to say, not only I'm going to love as God loves, but I am going to be the ways in which God loves Humanity loves this moment, loves this experience, loves me. And so I think that this is a really great opportunity for us to really uh, get a little clearer around that. You know, and uh, like I said, uh, for me, Christmas is already here. I mean, I can't believe it. Christmas season is already here. I know some of us started decorating a little earlier. Who started decorating a little earlier this year than others? Yeah, <laughs> I have to tell you, on uh, Thanksgiving, we're putting the final touches on our Christmas decorations, and our son Lucas just looks at us and goes, Papa, Dada, like, you got the wrong holiday. It's Thanksgiving, not Christmas. <laughs> and that's when I said, oh, maybe we went a little overboard, <laughs> right? But I think we needed some of that Christmas spirit. I needed some of that Christmas energy, because it has been a long year. It has been a... Well, you know, we, we throw that word around, unprecedented year. And so it's really been um, calling, for me at least, to do something to shift some of that energy. And the holiday season, Christmas, is such a great opportunity for that. And I know that in previous years, um, we've talked about um, the busyness of the season, right? Like how we can get caught up in some of that busyness. And I don't know about you, but I'm thinking that because of everything going on, it may just be a little easier to slow down this year and to really experience it in a different way, to really open ourselves up to what the true meaning is, to not only um, live it as the uh, day of Christmas or the days leading up to Christmas, but to be very intentional about really living the experience of creating the space, preparing for the holiday, right? And not only seeing it as one day, but really looking at it as a whole season, because the whole season, I believe, really has a lot of um, insight for us. As uh, the Daily Word mentioned, today is the first Sunday in Advent, and Advent is about this preparation. Now, Charles Fillmore, what he says about Christmas, our co-founder, he says, in this matter of celebrating Christmas, what should be the message to get at the real Christmas? What is that real Christmas? Shouldn't it be that celebration of the angels, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards men? That is to glorify God in the highest on the earth and peace on the earth and goodwill to men. For me, it is about really um, having faith in that presence of God. It is really being able to share that which is within me, with all, and to really be intentional about what I want to get out of this holiday season, what I want to really um, recognize this holiday season. It reminds me of that theme, uh, that meme, that some of you may be uh, looking at even on Facebook Live as you're watching this, or some of you may have already seen. It says, I thought 2020 would be the year I got everything I wanted. Now I know 2020 is the year I appreciate everything I have. Have you seen that one around? It really has made me pause in those moments and recognize, well, if I want to be very mindful in this experience, what is it that I can be grateful for? And how can I open myself up to whatever is being birthed through me? Because I think that that's really what's taking place. You know, 2020, we called it the year of perfect vision. We've been given the opportunity to really be visionary 
visionary about the ways in which we want to live life. No. Be really visionary about the ways in which we are going to accept and receive life and birth something great through the experiences that we hold within us. Now, Advent, uh, which means to come, it's really about um, something unknown that is on its way and being really open to something that we have never seen before. So imagine in this year, which we keep calling unprecedented, if we can maybe use that word a couple of more times to say this is the moment of an unprecedented opportunity this holiday season to know God more deeply, to know the truth of our being more deeply. This is an unprecedented opportunity for us to be an unprecedented expression of love and light. The ways in which we will move through this holiday season and what we allow to birth through us will be unprecedented. We have never experienced the love, the light, the peace, the joy that is God within us in this way ever before. Are you with me on wanting to experience this opportunity, this possibility that we have before us? Now, as we are celebrating Advent, and I was looking at the four Sundays, right? Because each Sunday um, before Christmas represents something. I was really thinking about um, something that I've sort of uh, grown into through the pandemic. I didn't realize I enjoyed baking as much as I have this year. And I really love baking with uh, my son, Lucas, baking cakes, cookies. I mean, this is a little bit more of a felt me in the last couple of weeks, but I gained that COVID-20 that they talk about, right? And so I really, um, when I was thinking about Advent, I was thinking about it through the lens of baking and how we um, have a recipe, right? To really create something that is gonna be yummy and delicious and satisfying, we have a recipe. And for those of you, how many of you have been cooking or baking a lot more than before, right? And so um, when you're baking, you, yeah, some of you are like, eh. <laughs> it's also an unprecedented time of ordering out, I get it. Uh, but you know, in baking, you have your ingredients and you have to be conscientious of the ingredients that you're putting in there. And you have to be conscientious of how much and the attention that you're giving it. And if you're like me, the actual um, process of baking is just as yummy and delicious as what you're gonna have at the end. You can enjoy it just as much, right? And so what are the experiences, what are the ingredients that we can add to this moment to be able to really birth the kind of dessert, the kind of life, the sweetness that we want to have in our lives? Well, uh, the first one is hope and faith. That's the first Sunday that we're celebrating today. Hope and faith. And for me, that's actually a call to nurture that hope and faith to really allow ourselves to go deep into that and create the spaces for that. The second uh, Sunday or the second ingredient is peace. And that to me is really about an invitation to being peace. How am I embodying peace in this moment? The third one is love. And for me, that is all about sharing the love. How am I exuding that? How am I really allowing that love to be felt through me and through my expressions in life? And then the fourth ingredient is joy. That is about really just experiencing joy, really being in the moment. So here is my recipe for a yummy, delicious uh, Advent Christmas season that will end up with the most wonderful Christmas cookies you'll ever get. So the first one, nurturing hope. It reminds me of that Bible verse, Christ in you, the hope of all glory. Because that to me really speaks to the fact that the hope that I have and that I can nurture in this moment is that which I am embodying, that which I already am. I can have hope and faith in how I've already shown up, how I've already expressed that Christhood. Yes, this has been a very challenging year for many people. And look at us. We've made it through. We are working it out, right? We are here. And that is something to celebrate. The fact that we have been able to really um, have faith in that which we are and how we are showing up, that says something to me. And my faith, my hope is in that Christ nature that I am, that I have already um, connected with 
and I'm continuing to learn more and more about. And hope is such a powerful thing because hope can really move us through the most, what we could believe as insurmountable doubts or fears. Um, there's this story in uh, Chicken Soup for the Surviving Soul. And um, it's for, uh, this book is about, uh, about people that have been moving through uh, cancer and uh, involved with that. And so there's a story there. Uh, two oncologists are talking. And one of them to the other is kind of like bitter and says, you know, Bob, I just don't understand. Right? Like, we use the same drug. We use the same dosage. We would use the same schedule, the same entry criteria. Yet I have a 22% success rate. And you have a 74% success rate. What gives, basically, is what he asks. What gives? And so Bob says, well, we are both using etoposide, platinum, oncovin, and hydroxyurea as the medicine. And you call it EPOH. Same drug, but I switch the letters around, and I call it H-O-P-E. And I tell my, um, the people that I su support and serve, that there is hope. And that hope makes all the difference. Think about the ways in which we have moved through this year and use that to bring a greater sense of hope and trust and faith that regardless of whatever may be going on around us, we have everything we need. Not only do we have everything we need, but we've already experienced ourselves embodying it because we are resilient, because we are strong, because we are courageous, because we are here. We've moved through past experiences and known more deeply who we are, the very expression of God. Now, with being peace, it's really interesting because for me, as soon as I think of that hope and that faith, that in itself builds my uh, muscle for being at peace. How many of you have surprised yourself this year in moments where you've actually been more at peace than you thought you'd be capable of, <laughs> right? I have, you know, and it's been something that I think we have been um, really getting comfortable with. I, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I think this has been the year of us getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that in itself has provided a certain level of peace, at least within me. Right? And so the peace is also about knowing our truth, you know, knowing that we are sacred, knowing that we are worthy. When we truly know that for ourselves, it doesn't matter what other people are doing. It doesn't matter the experiences that we may be having. We trust and know that what we are is sacred and worthy and can move mountains. Now, all of that I want to say is um, also about knowing that we are the ones that can control whether we're at peace or not, right? And so many times in the past, maybe even today, <laughs> we have allowed other people to control the peace that we could feel. More and more, I'm recognizing that there are ways in which we can nurture, we can create experiences that allows us to tap into that peace more often, you know, um, I'm looking at Roslyn here, and I know she's been going on walks to the beach and having those experiences. I know that I've created for myself, I, I, I jokingly say, you know, I mean, um, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have my morning Facebook meditations, and yes, it's for everybody to be a part of, but the reality is, is that I did it for me. I know it at the deep core level. I did it for me because I needed to give myself a date and time to go into meditation and to really be intentional about it. So how can you be more intentional about creating those spaces for yourself so that peace is just flowing from you, sometimes even without you being so intentional about it? Maybe have a buddy to call you. Have you meditated today? Have you taken a walk in nature today? Whatever it may be, right? Just look for those opportunities to really um, be at peace. And that, to me, also saying, you know, nobody else controls you know, the way that I can feel peace, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's a free-for-all around me, right? One of the things that I've also been more at peace with is I went to uh, Subway um, a couple of days ago with Lucas, and right outside the door, there was a couple of guys who were not wearing masks. And so 
I think at the beginning of this whole time, I probably would have responded differently, but very much comfortable with myself. I just said, hey, we're about to go into the restaurant. Can you either move out of the way or put on your masks? There was no animosity. There was no angst. It was just me being at peace with knowing my boundaries and being able to be at peace on whether people decided to adhere to them or not. Now, sharing love is a big part of this ingredient for me. Because I believe that sharing love is the way in which we fully understand how at peace <laughs> and how in trust and faith we really are. It's sort of like the way that we express it, you know? And I love Myrtle Fillmore, the other Unity co-founder says, um, when she's talking about like sometimes we get lost in the whole gift giving idea, she says, it would be much more in conformity with the Christ spirit to use the time in sending out to our friends the joyful thoughts that come spontaneously from the Christ love. The gift is but the symbol of what we desire for our friends. So what is the energy that you want to give off? What is that that you want to gift to those around you? Now, as I say that uh, this morning, I had a, you know, as I was putting together this talk, I was like, ah, oh, geez, ah, oh, darn, like, I can't believe I'm going to have to speak about this because it's not just for you to hear, but because it then made me realize that I wasn't necessarily living it so much last night. See, during the pandemic, my mom came back to live with me. And so we've had some experiences of really, like, figuring out our relationship, right? And so I know that after today and being with you guys today, I've got work to do at home. I've got work to, she's probably, I hope, maybe she's not watching today. So, so I can take it a little easy with the work. I'll ease into it. But sharing love, and for me, the, um, the way that I see it is L for listening. Really being able to listen to what people are saying and actually through people's actions. Think about the ways in which you, felt, you feel loved when somebody is listening to you in a very intentional way. The O is for optimizing. How are we optimizing our time that we have with the people around us? How are we optimizing the connections that we have? Even if it's through Zoom, even if it's through Facebook Live, how are we optimizing that? How are we really paying attention to each other and connecting from that space. Yesterday, last night, I was very intentional. I put my phone away um, and I watched Jingle Jangles with Lucas and Tom and had a great time. Lucas, like, he was like, oh, yeah, it's a great movie. Meanwhile, I'm like crying my eyes out, right? But being really optimal about the way that I'm using my time, V is for value. How are we valuing the people around us? This is part of the work, right, that I have to do today to recognize the many ways in which I value my mom, to go deeper into that and to allow that to then move me into the E, which is express. Express my gratitude. Express what I value, what that individual means. So you take a moment actually now to just think of one or two people that you really, really, really value in this moment. And just set the intention that during this holiday season, you're going to express how much they value to you. You're going to create the space, the time, the energy to really make that person feel your love. Receive your love. And to me, I think that when we do all these things, that last ingredient just kind of shows up, right? Because think about it. If you are in that flow of faith, of having hope, in moments of challenge, in any experience that you may be going through, if you are comfortable being in peace, being the embodiment of peace, and if you are just sharing that love, allowing that love to rise through you, I mean, think about it. Experiencing joy is just the natural progression of it. And so really, experiencing joy is about just getting out of the way letting go of the thinking, the thoughts that uh, no longer serve us, and to really allow ourselves to experience this holiday season the way that we were meant to, the ways in which can really deepen our understanding of our truth. You see, Christmas is about allowing that Christ nature to be birthed in us. That's what it symbolizes. But there's almost like a, 
uh, misnomer, or what, I don't even know what to call it, because it's this idea that it's going to happen on Christmas Day, this new birth, when in reality it is happening moment by moment, experience by experience. Actually, Charles Fillmore says about this, he says, it does not belong to the past. It is a vital living present truth. The bringing forth of the Christ child is not a work that is finished in Bethlehem. It is taking place in our midst every day. It is this that we celebrate. So as we are entering the final phase of 2020, how intentional are we going to be about what we want 2021 to be experienced as? Yes, this year has been unprecedented, but next year can also be unprecedented. That year can be Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. This moment can be unprecedented in the ways in which we allow this Christ energy that we are to flow through and as us. This is the moment that it has been unprecedented because this is the moment where you, you, me, all of us are allowing that Christ nature to freely flow from us, to be birthed in deeper and more expansive ways so that we can be that light that is shared more deeply, that is shared to more corners of the world. This is the moment that this perfect vision has brought us to. Our opportunity to say we are intentional about what is about to come. This Advent is a season of being energized, celebrating, and knowing full well that we are the light of God, and the light of God is here in unprecedented ways. I hope you join me in taking this time and this season to really know what it's all about. Thank you, and God bless.